Good afternoon and welcome to The Road to Recovery, The Road to Freedom with Mark. And this is indeed the afternoon, Friday afternoon. And once again we're rocking on with the show and uh, coming to you live. And oh blimey, we've got more than just live here my friends. Uh, come here, come on. We've got, this, oof. we've got this little wriggler here too. If you're on the telly you can see that. Oh blimey, no biting. Yeah, so, the newest member of our little family here, my little regular baby, she's been a wild old week, unfortunately I've had to have the, had to have the dog locked down for a bit because of COVID and that, and um, I'm sorry about the camera, I don't know why the camera's, um, there's a camera there and there's a camera there, and I don't know why, but we're on the wrong camera today, but we'll box on, such as live radio, eh? Regularly dogs and cameras aren't in the right place, but never mind. We box on. My show is about hey, no biting. My show is about dealing with um, with mental disorders and and stress and stuff. And I guess it's particularly relevant now. You know, there's a lot of uh, confusion, a lot of people feeling quite let down at the fact that uh, you know the Delta broke out in New Zealand. We weren't able to contain it. We asked everybody nicely to behave themselves and. They all uh, decided that they would, with the exception of enough people to completely wreck it for the rest of us. So, unfortunately, that is the nature of, of human beings, and I guess it's why I do my show, is to try and, and be that voice of reason that says to people, look, we are in this together. It doesn't matter now what, what colour you are, or race, or creed, or religion, or any other damn thing. We are all in this together, and we all need to get inoculated and it's not for ourselves you know it's not to keep ourselves healthy there's no way i'm going to drop dead from anything like that but i got inoculated of course i got the vaccine and i did it not to protect myself but to protect the young ones to protect you know the the kamatawa the, the old ones who we treasure so much the mokapuna who still have a future to live i don't want to see them die i don't want to see them get sick so this is this is what we're doing it for it's for fun now it's 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 for those around us who we love and that is the sole reason for doing this. And a lot of this anxiety and, and depression that we're feeling would be lessened greatly if we had a little bit more security and certainty and could trust each other a little bit more. And when push comes to shove, when there is a real, a real epidemic, when there is something really terrible that happens, the selfish and the greedy die first because they don't know how to trust others. But those who are kind, those who are good, those who can trust are the ones who survive because they have the capacity to care not just for themselves but other people. And it, it's only through cooperation that we can succeed in anything, really. And it's because of this world of selfishness that we encouraged for two entire generations that have left us so divided as people. You know, we used to be renowned as wonderful people, great hosts, a very tight um, society, you know, all, albeit racially divided, of course we've always been, and it's always upset me, but it's more than that. It's the fact that we've become so self-absorbed. It's all about you, now, 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 encouraging people to be selfish and greedy and, and self-concerned and the sense of self-entitlement that the world owes you a living and no one else and that you should there's nothing wrong with pushing it in front of people and disrespecting people and showing no courtesy and that that is what causes these problems and that's what causes all these mental health issues in the society and ever since the beginning of this outbreak our Prime Minister and what not have emphasised the fact that we need to be kind uh, towards each other, more respectful and I've seen it happen, I've seen this slowly but surely rubbing off on people but this exercise I attempted years before this and I noticed even in my town when I say please and thank you and really mean it it's amazing how many other people pick up from your lead that you are indeed an influencer in your own 
family, your own town, your own society, and the way you behave, people will mimic that. And if you behave badly, people will disrespect their town. You know, if you trash it and you burn it and you smash it, no one's going to care for it. Well, hardly anyone. But if everyone looks after something, then everybody else who might feel indifferent will then have respect because they see that people actually care. There's the odd a-hole who's just going to want to smash it because, you know, they've got some very bad problems between their ears that they need sorting out. And it's, it's a lot to do with them rather than the society that they're blaming for all their ills. If they invested $2 in the mirror, they might find that uh, therein lies the problem. You know, you treat things with disregard, then, you know, your society isn't worth much and you ain't worth much. But if we do think about looking after each other, we need to keep the lines of communication open. Ask people, are you OK? Are, are you doing all right? And try not to watch the 6 o'clock news so much because, as I said last week, you know, television loves nothing more than tragedy, you know, and they are going to keep pounding and pounding and pounding away on this. People look at the daily tallies and they're hanging on this. Look, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. And they're not going to tell you, you know, oh, there's 15 unidentified the next day. Oh, there's another 10 unidentified. They don't tell you whether the 15 got identified or not. That's yesterday's news. That's history. Today's tragedy is all we're interested in. So it's not the media's fault. It's TV's fault. It's the news's fault. It's the way that we do things. It's the people who are in charge of that, who are telling them, this is what sells. This is what gets bums on seats. Tragedy, tragedy. Whip it all up. And so everybody is fearful and panicking and anxious. And those of us in society who are a little bit more prone to worrying about things like that, they go into a hell of a spin. We are going to get through this. There is absolutely no doubt. Will there be way more people who get infected? Yes. Will the hospitals get overwhelmed? Yes. Will you have to look after people at home? Yes, there will be. This big lump in the parabolic curve, this big apex where there's going to be loads of people going down, but hardly any are going to die. And there will be a few that will have ongoing effects, and that is really tragic. But out of the five million, we're not going to lose a million or a hundred thousand, or a thousand, or even a hundred. There's going to be a handful of people who are vulnerable and sick anyway, and this is going to knock them off rather than pneumonia. That's the difference. People who are like in their 80s and 90s at the end of their life have respiratory problems, they're ready to fall over, and people are going on about what a terrible tragedy it is. They contracted um, COVID and died. Well... They were at the end of their life, you know. Surely, surely you must realise that when somebody hits 86, they haven't got many days left and something is going to knock them over. Going on about this, like this is a lightning strike out of the blue that knocked them over is just not realistic. And whipping it up into some terrible fatality doesn't help anybody. What we need now is strength. What we need now is calmness. We need a coming together because everybody, everybody is experiencing mental health issues now. There are people who have never, ever been through this before. The, the isolation, the not being able to see family, they just don't know how to cope. So those of us who are used to this need to front up and say, look, everything is going to be okay. We're going to get through this. We will. We may have to live with this virus and it may knock a few people off each year, but once this has fallen out of popularity, it'll almost be, oh, well, we'll just box on. And that's exactly what we've got to do. But more than that, we need to look after each other. And those who need that specialist help, that professional help, we need to get those people. We need to prioritise those people who are absolutely crumbling at this point. I mean, there's people, they've lost businesses, all their dreams, all their plans have just completely disintegrated around them. And the tragedy, the fallout of that is so hurtful and harmful 
those are the people we need to get behind and help. And any business now, any small business <coughs> that we can save, it's extremely important we do. And you need to think, this is why I'm saying to you, you need to think about supporting small businesses because they are the ones who are going to super struggle. We've got the finest batch bakery in Pahia Tour, my next door neighbours. Fantastic bakers, make their own pies. If you get a chance, stop in at the finest batch. Joe and, and um, her husband, um, Craig, and the young lass there, and the young son, lovely people, fantastic job, make the most beautiful pies and so many other good food. And, you know, their business is one quarter of what it was. People are finding it tough financially, but here is where there is an opportunity for us to come together as a society and come through this a lot better than if we're just busy grabbing and grasping for ourselves. But the other thing I'd like to encourage people to do is be prepared, OK? It doesn't matter whether it's a, an outbreak of disease or an earthquake or a flood, but you need to be prepared. There are certain things that you need to do. One is make sure that you've got a first aid kit. It doesn't matter if it's just a few bits and pieces, as long as you've got enough to help somebody if they, you know, if they have a bad accident. The other thing you need to do is food security. And it doesn't matter if you've only got a kilo of rice a kilo of rice is 20 mils. That's nearly three weeks' worth of food. So if food gets cut off, at least you've got something to eat and maybe even something to spare. And if you just chip away at it, a kilo of rice is a couple of bucks. Anybody, anybody can find $2. And if you can get a little bit more besides, you know, just dry food. that You can put in a cupboard, maybe a few tins. Just have enough there that you know that you can survive for a few weeks should everything go horribly wrong, because I guarantee you at some point we're going to have another major earthquake in New Zealand. We are going to have terrible floods, you know, that are, that are just going to send houses under. These things happen all of the time. We know they happen. We've seen them happen even in recent times. We've had the Kaikura and the Christchurch earthquakes, we saw the terrible tragedy. And just imagine if we had an earthquake in the middle of COVID. Boy, would that send the cat amongst the pigeons. So this is the things that we've got to think about and be prepared for in order to protect not just ourselves but our families as well, to get ourselves through the tough times and the tragedies and to stick together as a people and support each other. This is where it's really at, you know, and... You know, things are going to get tough. If you can fix your mortgage rates now, please fix them. Inflation's about to go up. It's going to be driven by things like the price of petrol, which has just skyrocketed. So things are getting really tough for us all now. And this is where, rather than getting meaner, we need to get kinder and more generous and help people out more. And we need to be thinking about, you know, do I really need? to drive down to the shops in the car. Can I, can I walk? Would that not be a good thing? It's a beautiful sunny day. Could I not do with a walk? You know, ride around on a bicycle rather than, you know, driving in cars. You know, cut down those unnecessary, wasteful trips that you need. Just economise. I'm not saying, you know, deny yourself anything. Don't deny yourself a trip to the beach, but maybe fill the whole car with two families. You know, share the costs of things. Um, see if you can share a ride into work with someone. Car sharing is, you know, it's so simple and it's so important. I sit on those Auckland motorways when I'm up there and I count how many people are in each car. And 90% of those cars have just one person in them. And they are bumper to bumper crawling across those motorways. And I think, what a tragedy. You know, if only these people could get their shit together and just, you know, car share. It's not hard. Halve the amount of cars on the road by car sharing. Halve the amount of petrol that's wasted getting to and from work. And then try and find a car park. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I saw an empty car park in Auckland. It's just not there. There are loads and loads and loads of apartments going up in Auckland. 
tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands with no car parks. Okay, so you ain't going to have a car in the future. Those old shitty clunkers that pollute this world are a thing of the past, and we do not need them, and we do not want them. I lived in London for five years, never had a car, never needed a car. Use public transport because it was good. So that's where we need to invest the money, in moving vast numbers of people during rush hour. Back in the day when I first, first started working, I would catch the train in from Waterloo to Wellington every single day. And, you know, it was never a problem. I was never late for work. I never had to worry about crashing a car. I never had to worry about traffic jams. What we need to invest in in this country is proper public transport, trains and buses, and electric ones at that, so that we're not polluting. That is the solution, and as far as I'm concerned, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, and I won't ever stop saying it, the best thing you could possibly do is make public transport free. Free and clean. On time, plenty of. Buses and trains. Rumbling in and out, and if people can trust it, it's reliable, it's clean, and it's free, you watch the cars vanish off the streets. You watch the death toll go down, down, down. It'll save 100 lives a year. It'll save heaps and heaps of traffic accidents. It'll clear up the traffic jams, remove the necessity for a second bridge across Auckland. All of that just through putting in public transport, which will work out cheaper than building more and more and more and more roads. That is not the solution. More train tracks, yeah, I'll be into that, because we can move bulk, and I want to see more of these logging trucks off the roads, more logs on trains. If you go to Napier, the tracks run right on to the wharves. Same deal in Wellington, and I'm sure it's true of most of the ports of New Zealand, is you've got tracks running all the way in. So it's not like you've got a double handle, triple handle, load, unload, load, unload. No, 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 it goes on the train, to the wharf, off she comes. That's it. Deal done. Okay, so... You know, the fewer trucks there are on the roads, the fewer stones are going to get thrown into my damned windscreen. You know, the, the fewer fatalities, the fewer loads are going to fall off because there's just fewer loads. All of these simple things that we can do to make our, our lives better, our societies better, this is what we need to do. We need to support each other and let clear heads rule here and not panic and, and, and worry unnecessarily. I don't like the way that people are winding each other up with this, you know. I I try to watch the chase and, and Aussie gold hunters rather than the news too much. I get what information I need to and then I just turn it off. Just get it the hell out of my life and just try and occupy myself with things that make me feel better. And that's a good way of, you know, um, getting rid of your worries and your anxieties. It's getting lost in a game or a conversation or something, with a meal with friends, and just forget about the worries of the world. Don't be concentrating on them all the time. That's the important thing, is that we concentrate on the positive, on the good things in life. And there are many of us who, who will be locking ourselves down and suffering really, really badly. This is an epidemic not just in the form of a disease, but a wave of mental health issues. You've got to remember the young people, the teenagers now, are going through a hellish time, you know, unlike anything they've ever had. Hey, please don't do that. Don't. No biting wires, or one will get electrocuted, won't one, puppy? Hey, and it'll be and you won't be very happy. So please don't you wise, bub. Yeah, so it's you know, it's very, very important that we look after each other and, and, and concentrate on the positives, on the happy side of what we are doing well. You know, there are other countries in the world, even Australia, our next door neighbours, they are suffering so badly. We are doing a good job and I pat you on the back for your efforts so far. But please, please, please get as many people inoculated as you can. There is no government trying to put stupid bloody chips in you and track you. You already carry a cell phone. You already, everything you do is known. And it's stored. And it will be sold someday. But you're not the slightest bit bothered about using your stupid phone. 
you know, to to do, 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 bye, 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 um, all your conversations, everything you ever did, everything has been recorded. So, you know, this thing about conspiracies, about governments trying to do this and that to you, it's, it's just a silly nonsense. And, you know, these people saying, oh, they're taking away our freedoms. They're not taking away your freedom. They're trying to give you freedom. We're trying to all be free, free of disease, free of suffering, free of, of, of mental anxiety. We do this by coming together and showing that we support each other, even if you don't want to do it. You don't do it for you. You do it for us, for the greater good. This is what it's all about. You live in a society, okay? You need to protect your society. It's your job to stand up and be that hero, be that heroine, and convince others who are on the fence at the moment that they need to protect us all, and we need to come together. This is not, this is not a tragedy. This is an opportunity, and this is not a terrible thing. Good can come of it. Good can come of any and all tragedies if if you think it is a tragedy, but I don't see it that way. I see this as an opportunity to improve things and make things better, to improve the mental health in our country. You know, I've been doing this show for six or seven years now, and when I first started, people thought I was some kind of odd bloody goldfish. Oh, mental health, oh, what are you talking about? It's a strange thing to say. And now, blimey, every man and his dog, even the popular radio stations are going on about these things. So it's great to see that it's now become popular, and maybe that's all it took, was for people to realise that, you know, saying to somebody who's suffering, oh, hard enough, it's, it's just nonsense. This is ignorance, you know, and it doesn't help anybody. You know, treating people with disrespect, it, it, it harms not just that individual, but you as well, because it makes you less of a person. If you're that petty that you need to go out of your way and put somebody down, oh, you're mad, oh, you're insane. Well, you know, everybody suffers at some point from some form of mental illness, but putting people down and deriding people and treating it like it's some kind of shameful thing. It's just wrong in every way, and it doesn't benefit anybody. You know, having a pop at someone who's vulnerable doesn't make you a hero. It makes you a coward. It makes you weak, picking on the weak. You know, that's just... It's evil, and it's sad. This is an opportunity for us to get together and really show what we're made of and, and prove that we're a hell of a lot better than what you thought we were. That we're actually a a proud nation of good people who really want to look after each other. That's why I do this radio station show. I don't get paid for this. Michael and Veronica, who run this show, they could get paid mega bucks working in a big professional organisation, but they don't. They work for this little old not-for-profit radio station that scrapes by on the smell of an oily rag, and they try and they try and they never give up because they believe in their community and making a difference, not just here in Marston where we do the show, but the whole of the Wire Rapper, the Hawks Bay, my friends on the carpet, all of you are our whānau, all of you are our extended family, and we care about you all, and that's why we do this show. None of us make money out of this, none of us become famous, you know, this, we give. We give because we care about each other. Even a cranky old bugger like me can still make a contribution. Even, you know, someone who can't work. I, mean, I was up until about four this morning because I got insomnia. So, you know, just because I'm ill doesn't mean I can't contribute to society. I could go away and just kick back and get drunk and stoned every day and say, what do I care about anyone else? I'm okay, Jack. But that doesn't benefit me, really, you know. That's... It's existing, that's not living. Living is when we do something bigger than ourselves, better than ourselves. We rise to the occasion and say, hey, you know, I actually do care about those around me. I realise I live in a society. I'll do my bit. What can I do to help? You know, in whatever way I can. I've been very... Lucky, I suppose you could call it, and that I have good communication skills. It's one of my strengths. And so I utilise that to do my little bit on radio and TV. So thank you, Wairapa TV, for you know, bringing the community together. 
we watch so many things from overseas. They're, they're foreign and they're false, and they're over there and nothing to do with our lives. Local radio, local TV, the beauty of that is that is us, that is our lives, that is real and here and now and happening. And that's why I'm so into this, is that this is a beautiful, beautiful country, a wonderful place, and I would encourage everybody this Christmas to get out to a town nearby and spend, spend, spend that money on those little fish and chip shops and bakeries and those little mom and pop stores that really need your help. Have a good time this Christmas. Have the best Christmas you've ever had. Not from the number of presents that you get, but from the number of friends you make. See how many friends you can make this Christmas. Do something nice for somebody. You know, just do something nice. Buy them a cup of coffee. I don't know, give them a bit of pizza. Something nice. You know, go out of your way. You see, if you can make this the happiest Christmas that's ever been, it's my challenge to everybody for this year. Have a wonderful Christmas, a wonderful New Year. Don't get shit-faced. Don't kill anyone drink driving. Just be kind and responsible for once. Let's really give it our all to make it a happy, happy time. Remember those people who, like me, who are on their own at Christmas. It's only me and this little dog. If I didn't have her, I'd have no one at all. You know, those... Remember those people at Christmas who were doing it tough and, 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 and got no money and, and suffering? Say hello, say good day. Make a point, all Christmas holidays, of saying good day to people, how we used to do. I really like that when that happens. When people say hello to you and give you a smile, it can change somebody's day. It can save somebody's life. You just never know. And what does a smile cost you? Nothing at all. So there you go. What does it cost to say hello? Just say hello. Just acknowledge everybody. Instead of turning that cold shoulder of indifference. That's what I want to see from us this year. That's my show. And I know I didn't talk a hell of a lot about mental health and I didn't read you a lot of stories today, but I think it's important that I get the message across that now more than ever, hey little pup, we, knew we really need to look after each other. You know, we really do. So I'm looking out for you. You look out for those around you. Have a good week. Thanks to all my friends. And uh, I'll catch you again. Bye for now.